Am I the a-hole for telling my wife's kid sister I never liked her? I'm 30, my wife is 34, and her sister Alexa is 19. We got married two years ago, but we've known each other for a long time. My wife's parents live abroad and they have a business there. And 11 to 12 years ago, they sent Alexa to the US to live with my wife and get her education. My wife is basically her only parents and she does everything for Alexa. I'll be honest, Alexa is a brat who honestly gets on my nerves. It's like she exists to make my wife's life miserable. She's arrogant, rude, entitled, nasty. She constantly broke rules and none of her teachers ever liked her. She also refused therapy. I'm amazed at the patience and kindness my wife has because the girl was a nightmare. The second Alexa went to college, we got married. She came home for Thanksgiving, probably skipping classes, and came to me this weekend and confessed her feelings. Apparently, I treated her so much better than my wife when she was growing up. I tried to be nice to her just because she's my wife's sister. I do things like take her out once in a while to give my wife, then girlfriend, a break. When my wife would try to tutor Alexa and she wouldn't even do her work and fail half her classes, I told her to let it go. I lost it and told her I don't like her. I never liked her. And I was only nice to her because it would make my wife happy. I told her I only put up with her spoiled self to be with my wife, and I was annoyed whenever she intruded. Alexa started sobbing and ran out. I told my wife everything, and she said I was right to turn her down but didn't have to be so harsh, though she thanked me for being honest. Her parents are furious, and I've gotten a bunch of weird text messages from what I suspect are Alexa's friends. Am I the a-hole? Edit. I would never do anything because Alexa's literally a kid I've seen grow up. It would be disgusting and immoral. I would have shut her down either way, but I'm asking if I'm the a-hole for revealing how I really feel about that brat. Not the a-hole. Don't be alone with her ever again. Her words against yours. Red flags. This and WTF. Alexa has the hots for OP? I must have missed that totally until I read through the comments. OP, it might be useful to spell this out in your post for dense people like me. But wow. Yes, please keep far away. She's trouble you don't need in your life. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. She's an adult and needs a reality check for her past behavior. The problem isn't what you did, is that no one did it before. Her parents have no right to be upset, since they passed off the job of parenting to your wife. To be clear, my wife would always take her out on these things and give her money for concert tickets and drive her places. Yeah. Protect yourself and never be alone with her. I'm sure she feels like her parents threw her away for being a problem child, and she resents her older sister for having everything she doesn't, as in parents that didn't dump her, a successful career I assume, and a loving husband, mostly the first thing. I don't at all doubt that she'll shift the negative energy she had against you now and potentially try to break the two of you up or ruin your life with lies. She needs therapy badly, like really badly. Not day whole, but what in the world is going on? Your wife thinks you were too harsh in turning down her sister's attempt to ruin your marriage? Were you supposed to just pull a Gabby from Desperate Housewives and say, that's negatory on the affair, with a smile on your face? My wife's always had a weak spot for Alexa. Alexa is a cross between her baby sister and her first child. Meanwhile, Alexa clearly views your wife in the same way a parasite views its host. Your wife needs therapy to figure out why even when Alexa tried to steal her husband, she still advocated for Alexa instead of herself. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my brother and sister-in-law that for crying out loud, my nephew is not special and is an overgrown child? My parents had me, 36 female, when Mike, 53 male, was a teenager, and Mike had Logan at 22, so I'm closer in age to my nephew, 31 male. My brother Mike and his wife, 52 female, Chloe, believe that the world should revolve around their son, Logan, and that anyone who thinks differently is wrong and doesn't realize how special Logan is. Logan, Mike, and Chloe tell people that Logan does freelance for a living, which is code for Logan being unemployed, playing video games, and generally living like a teenager off school. Mike and Chloe handle all of Logan's adult responsibilities. They send him money every month so Logan can pay rent and have fun. Chloe will cook most of Logan's meals and drop them off at his house. She will do and drop off all his laundry as well. 
Mike and Chloe tried getting me to fork over money for a Vegas vacation because I had just taken a trip to Fort Lauderdale and it's not fair that Logan doesn't get to go on vacation as well. I told them, hell no, because Logan's a 30-year-old man and I'm not going to pay for his vacation. Mike and Chloe told me how selfish and awful I was toward my own nephew. Mike and Chloe also expect other family members to cater to Logan this way and react the same way if someone else isn't revolving their life around Logan. Naturally, our relationship is very strained. We keep our interactions very superficial and we don't see each other unless we're all at a family event. A few days ago, we were at a baby shower for Mike and I's cousin. Mike and Chloe came up to me just to criticize me over the fact that I attended Logan's ex fiance Alexia's hooting ceremony. Some background information is that Alexia was given a list of marriage demands from Mike and Chloe. They expected Alexia to provide three meals a day and do all the chores while still working full-time. Logan had told Alexia that he was completely supporting himself through his freelance work. And Alexia didn't know until then that Mike and Chloe were sending him money every month and handling all his responsibilities as Logan always insisted on going to her house. Alexia noped out of their relationship and Alexia and I are still friends. I told Mike and Chloe that I'm an adult and I'm allowed to be friends with whomever I want. They started to raise their voices and said I'm disrespecting them by speaking with Alexia after she abandoned Logan and can't see how great he is. I told them that for crying out loud, Logan isn't special, he's an overgrown child. They may have deluded themselves but stop being mad that nobody else is enabling their fantasy. Family members are divided on what I said. Some are agreeing with what I said because they are tired of Mike and Chloe's demands that everyone's life must revolve around Logan, and it had to be said. But others are saying that it was supposed to be a nice family event, and even if I don't mean it, I could have just said sorry instead of causing drama. Am I the a-hole? Info. This was a baby shower for your cousin. What does your cousin say? If cousin thinks you did wrong, apologize to cousin and to the other family members, but not to Mike and Chloe. Because after all, it is true that you could have just held your tongue and let Mike and Chloe make fool of themselves without participating yourself in ruining a family occasion. Easier said than done, I know. Our cousin is one of the people who agreed with me. She is also sick and tired of Mike and Chloe's demands regarding Logan. I think the fact that Mike and Chloe approached the OP to criticize her friendship with Logan's ex gave her a bit more leeway. Even if Logan had a diagnosis of developmental delay or whatever, the goal would still be to encourage him to be independent as possible. This will eventually get old, and they will get tired of caring for their adult-aged little kid. It will be a rude awakening for everyone, not the a-hole. Or they will continue on until they die and leave their middle-aged or older little boy who is completely unable to function in the world. Sounds like my 35-year-old cousin. Mommy walks him home from work every day because some little kids pointed at him three years ago. He isn't allowed to leave the room with his phone, and Daddy takes it away at 9 p.m. every night. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not helping my sister with her wedding because I'm not in a bridal party? My sister and I aren't best friends, but we have a pretty good relationship. Good enough that when she got engaged, I assumed that I would either be a maid of honor or at least a bridesmaid. She ended up not asking me despite having a bridal party of 10, but I didn't say anything even though I was a little hurt. I totally get that it's her wedding and that I'm not entitled to be in her wedding party and eventually got over it. A little afterwards, my best friend got engaged and asked me to be maid of honor, and I happily dived into the responsibility, and it's been a lot of fun for the both of us. I've already been able to plan and execute a lot that has both made experience fun for my friend and also a lot less stressful. On to the issue. My sister's maid of honor honestly dropped the ball. I know I'm going to be biased, but I've received complaints from family members and other friends. She hasn't put any effort into helping my sister with her wedding, didn't plan anything, never responds to my sister's messages, and just generally isn't interested at all. None of my sister's other bridesmaids are stepping up either, though they all have a reason for why they can't spend more time on my sister's wedding. So, my sister recently approached me to plan everything for her bridal shower, bachelorette, and the actual wedding. She wants me to give her the same experience I've given my friend. I was a little offended because she only asked me after she saw what a great job I did for someone else. But she's my sister, so I told her I'd be willing to help if she made me a bridesmaid. I feel like it's the least she could do, and it would make me feel less like an errand girl and really part of the wedding. 
She refused and said that I'd make the numbers off and that I didn't have the look she was trying to accomplish, which really offended me. Like, at this point, I'm just angry. So I said, fine, I don't have to be part of the wedding, but then she needs to hire me as a wedding planner because I'm not doing this for free. It takes a huge time commitment to do all of this work. She went crying to mom and dad now, and they're all calling me in a hall because I should do it as a sister. But she's basically asking me to do hours of work for free, which I feel like isn't fair. Now my family's saying that I'm ruining her special day by being selfish and making it all about me. So I'm starting to doubt myself. Now for the top comments. Not day whole. Unrelated to whether you're a bridesmaid or not, that's too much work to expect, demand, or wheedle out of someone. Let her figure something else out and enjoy not having any responsibility as a guest. I would probably debate even going to the wedding based on her sister and family's behavior. What are you thinking? How could Opie skip the wedding of the golden child? Opie's not a hole. Notice the parents just criticized and called Opie an a-hole. Why aren't they helping the golden child do the planning? Opie's the only one that can do this? Opie, don't help and probably even skip the wedding. They are going to try to keep pulling you in. Holy entitled princess, Batman. Your sister refused to give you a spot of honor at her wedding, insulted your look, and then cried to mommy and daddy because you're not helping her? How is she even old enough to get married? No, you are not the a-hole. Last story. Am I the a-hole for not sacrificing time with my family so that my wife can spend time with hers? My wife and I are trying to see both of our families for Thanksgiving this year. Our plan is to go see her family on Thursday morning and afternoon and then drive to my parents' house to spend Thursday and Friday night there. From our house, it is a three-hour drive to my wife's Uncle Bob's house where her family's gathering. Then it is another two-hour drive to my parents' place from there. And finally, an almost four-hour drive home on Saturday. A lot of driving, especially with two kids, five and three. Our original plan was just to see my family. But my wife's favorite Aunt Viv and Uncle Ray are driving out of state to visit this year and just decided this a couple weeks ago. My wife hasn't seen them in almost four years and she's super excited. They were supposed to drive on Wednesday night, but I guess something in their plans changed, and they aren't expecting to get in until late Thursday night or possibly Friday morning. My wife is disappointed, and she now wants to change our entire plans to plan around seeing this aunt and uncle. She wants us to find a place to stay in her Bob's city so that she can spend time with her favorite Viv and Ray. Bob doesn't have space for us to stay there, because other family members are already staying with him, so it would have to be a hotel. I did a quick check when my wife mentioned her idea and there are no rooms available for cheaper than $500 a night, unless we want to drive another hour away. She would also want to spend the majority of the day on Friday with her family and go see my parents late Friday night. I told her I don't want to sacrifice time with my family. I haven't seen my parents since 4th of July and with my wife's plan, we would essentially sleep there Friday night and then head home Saturday. I have to be back home on Sunday because I'm scheduled to be on call for work that day, and there's no way I can find someone to switch with me. I told my wife that if she wants to spend more time with her family, then she can drive there herself on Friday morning, and I will stay at my parents' place. I told her she can either take the kids with, or I will keep them with me. Her choice. She told me that Viv and Ray haven't even met our youngest, so she would want to take the kids, but since the drive is so long, she would want my help by driving at the kids. That's why, to her, it makes sense to try and stay somewhere in Bob's city, regardless of the cost. $500 wouldn't break us, but that's a lot of money to spend on one night. I told her I don't want to change our plans at all and she thinks I'm being an a-hall about it. She said she really wants to see Viv and Ray and this is her only chance. Sorry, this is so confusing. Our plan is already complicated and I would rather just stick with it than try and change things up. It's already going to be stressful. I've already decided that I will strongly argue against trying to see both families like this in the future. It's just too much. I would say swap the plans and see your family for Thanksgiving on Thursday, if it is not too late to accommodate you. Spend the night there and then see her family Friday and come home Saturday as planned, absorbing the cost of the hotel for Friday night. You get your family time in, she gets her family time in. Seems like an equitable compromise. If your wife isn't willing to forgo Thanksgiving Day with her family to see her aunt and uncle longer, then she's the a-hole here. A couple of hours on Friday with your family isn't fair. My parents have already made other plans for Thursday because they weren't expecting us. 
Yes, I could ask them to cancel those plans for us, but I feel like that's kind of asking a lot. Our original plan was to only see my family for Thanksgiving because we aren't seeing them for Christmas this year. My parents are flying to visit my sister and her family for Christmas, so we were going to spend Christmas with only my wife's family. But when my wife heard Viv and Ray are coming, she wanted to change our plans to see them. Yeah, honestly then, she sadly needs to sacrifice Thanksgiving. The best way, in my experience, is that whichever family gets Christmas has to give up Thanksgiving to the other. If you're doing Christmas at her parents' house, then Thanksgiving is at yours. No a-holes here though, in my opinion. At least not yet. She understandably wants to see a family member she hasn't seen in forever. But she can't blow up plans like this a week before Thanksgiving and give your parents only a few hours with their grandkids. Is there any way that Viv and Ray could come early or follow you to your parents' city? Or maybe see them at Christmas instead? Doubtful. They were already supposed to arrive on Wednesday. But that got pushed back to Thursday or possibly Friday for reasons I am not aware of. I don't know how long Viv and Ray are staying, but I would imagine they want to spend it with their family and not mine.